Welcome to the Global Roundtable. This series focuses on the future of economic competition. I'm Parag Khanna, joined by a very distinguished panel, including Dambisa Moyo, Daniel Altman, and Anand Girdhardas. Today, we're focusing actually on whether or not bankers should be thrown behind bars. And there are all kinds of cliches now about how Wall Street should be treated in the aftermath of the financial crisis. They privatize gains and socialize losses and so forth. But we haven't really answered the question because not enough has actually been done about it. So what are we going to do with the bankers? Well, I think we need to treat them the way we would treat people who make mistakes in almost any sector. We need personal responsibility because right now the buck stops with shareholders. And whether it's taxpayer picking up the bill or a bunch of shareholders, we're diffusing the responsibility away from the people who really make the bad choices, and they're the executives. We need personal responsibility for them. We saw it with Sarbanes-Oxley when CEOs and CFOs had to personally sign their financial statements. All of a sudden, they wanted to know what was in them, right? That's a big step in the right direction. Absolutely. Most people who work in the financial industry, including the people who run financial institutions, will agree that something went wrong. But I think to focus specifically um, on bankers and penalizing bankers um, without really looking at the broader context is to miss a bigger point. The responsibility of governments is to provide free public goods, um, things like education and healthcare and infrastructure and so on, provision of regulation and also for setting a, a policy environment that makes things work. Those are the three responsibilities of government. And it's absolutely clear that in the context of derivatives, in the context of the financial crisis, the, the government's definitely fell down. We have yet to find this middle ground between the government responsibility to regulate and yet the economy and the business sectors need to have freedom to be creative and to be entrepreneurial. Where is that middle ground going to be in this country? Banks are means to an end. They're lubricants of other people's commerce. Mm -hmm. They've always been in the background wearing those gray suits, being conservative, helping other people take risks, make iPads, etc. At some point, uh, we all got confused, not just bankers, into thinking about banks as an end in themselves. In fact, the only real end in, in itself in the American economy, the most dynamic thing, the thing that every smart undergraduate wanted to do. When banks step out front and become the star, it's a very dangerous thing. But and I don't think we've learned that lesson fully. Hold on a second. We have to stop calling them banks because financial institutions right. are also insurance companies, hedge funds. We have a whole bunch Agreed. of different animals out there right now. The problem is that we don't even know what they're doing. Forget regulation. We don't even have the monitoring. But we'll never see a crisis coming if we can't see what's actually going on in this industry. Regulators, though, have been guilty of two things. Not only are they uh, have been asleep at the switch, so to speak, not paying attention to all of the things that banks were doing, but they also don't necessarily have the technical competence to understand it, which is why why don't you think that actually the financial industry needs to have some self-monitoring mechanisms in a way because only they can actually uh, know what they're doing? Well, there are ways that we're looking at now in the financial sector to help banks to assess what their risks would be based on the risks of other banks. And that's a step in the right direction, too. But we'll never really close the circle until we have global monitoring, because all of the financial markets are global right now. If we only have regulation or monitoring in a few traditional centers, then all of the activity that we're trying to stop, the herd behavior and the exotic trades, will just move offshore. And we need to be very conscious that that's a risk for our markets, too. We actually get this right in a number of professions. Airplane pilots, when they're up there, are not trying to optimize for getting the biggest raise and deciding how to land. There's a kind of ethic on the best landing, the safest well, landing. They, they're pretty aligned with the passengers in terms <laughs> of their incentives. <laughs> no, fair enough. But I, I'm just saying there's a number of professions in which we get this right, in which, yeah. we, in which we don't get people to very narrowly think about one variable. Yeah. So I don't think we can take it for granted that in this industry people are incapable. We pay um, executives of corporations and of banks based on performance and that's really what they're driving to achieve. I mean, it, it's no, it's no, there's no interest for them to have these institutions blow up. But at the same time, they do look for guidance from the regulators and policymakers in order to, to define what the framework is but, where they work. But we need to pay them for long-term performance. When we start paying them for short-term, that's when we run into absolutely, problems. Absolutely, it's the same yeah. with policy. We're all, to stretch on an analogy, we're all in the same economic jumbo jet, and it's a long-haul <laughs> flight. Well, thanks very much for your insights. More on this and other very pertinent topics related to the future of the global economy at Big Think. Think.com.